this is gonna be spicy about um i'm trying to think about how many years ago this was five years ago i feel it was like five like four or five years ago 2021 says in the tweet oh okay yeah i i probably should have read that and uh anyway so goldfish memory completely contradictory statement only two days apart and then some uh, guy says, you work for Jews. And then Elon Musk responds to the accusation that you work for Jews by saying, while I don't condone the actions of one group, I must admit to being openly philo-Semitic. I don't know what that is. Same, actually. Uh, and generally trying to see the good in all people. And then in a response to... Philo-Semitic most likely means that he's against all groups group think i'm assuming philo or uh, against any philosophy in general that resembles religion not a hundred percent sure probably completely wrong to that just making a guess this guy says bring back nick fuentes on twitter he's been banned since 2021 what oof nick fuentes this is gonna be fun if anyone does not know, Nick Fuentes is Destiny's best friend. It's actually hilarious. They were eating pancakes and making uh, anti-Jew jokes and smiling to each other. It was great. Absolutely 100% worth, uh, worth watching that clip. What happened to your promise, big guy? Elon Musk goes and says, very well, he will be reinstated provided he does not violate the law and let him be crushed by the comments and community notes. Hmm. It's better to have anti-whatever out there in the open to be rebutted than grow simmering in the darkness. And so it's looking like uh, it's looking like Nick Fuentes is getting uh, getting unbanned. And hmm. so this is what he says here. This will get enormous backlash, but if it's free speech platform, I think it's the right move. I think that what e yeah, it's definitely going to get backlash. Elon Musk wants to do. I think any unban on Twitter gets backlash no matter what. If it's uh, any person of any notoriety whatsoever. Is that he wants to... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, he wants to bring everybody back on Twitter. So there's no longer an expectation that advertisers will have that content will be removed from Twitter. I think this is like a meta level strategy that he has. Where it's like, basically, I'm going to unban everybody. I'm going to not ban anyone. And so, I think the goal is to normalize not expecting the the platform to take an action to normalize that. So that way, advertisers don't pull out every single time somebody has a bad tweet. I think that's basically what his strategy, what his, like, what... Okay. Um, wow. That is... That is almost a half decent idea. So first of all, th this this is stupid. You're gonna try try and normalize advertisers to not pull out because uh, their products can be uh, placed on any bad person that they don't like, and then they're gonna be berated by people, uh, even if it happens. That's stupid. That <laughs> that is completely stupid. Now, we actually know what Elon Musk's real plan is because, yeah, he has been saying that for a long time and, yeah, we have known this for, like, since he bought Twitter, honestly. But a much a much better version of this would be if Asmongold said, well, Elon Musk is unbanning everyone, which means all parts of the political spectrum, all parts of any spectrum, which means all the people from all sides of the world have a reason to be on Twitter. AKA, a much better take would be to say that Elon Musk is unbanning everyone because he wants to make Twitter so big and so large that advertisers do not have a choice but to advertise on Twitter because otherwise they are losing too much value. Uh, that would be the way, way smarter choice to not just saying, well, Elon Musk is going to make it so that, you know, Coca-Cola doesn't get pissed. Uh, that, you know, their products are uh, are on uh, beheading videos. Yeah, that that's that's stupid. But the real thing that Elon Musk has said and is doing, why this does make sense to unban everyone, is the fact that he, he said that, he said this like many times already, by the way, we have talked about this multiple times. He doesn't want to even be reliant on advertisements.
That's why he tried all. That's why he's trying this video, uh, YouTube videos. That's why he's trying to be, you know, Twitch. That's why he's trying the Twitter blue by checkmark thing. That's why he's implementing all these things. He does not want Twitter to be in general reliant on advertisers because advertisers have too much power over you. If all of your uh, income is coming from an advertiser, and let's face it, there are a couple of big advertisers that dominate this sphere, like, you know, Coca-Cola and whatnot. They're probably a huge percent of uh, uh, Twitter's income. So if Coca-Cola says, yeah, you can't have this on your platform, otherwise we're going away, they have too much power over you. There's no advertiser power over Tesla. There's no advertiser power over SpaceX. And these companies can effectively do whatever they feel like at whatever levels of freedom that they choose to do. G uh, uh, granted by Elon, uh, by Elon Musk say so. But that's just how companies work. And he probably doesn't want, uh, and he probably wants the same to Twitter. He doesn't want to worry about the idea that Twitter suddenly is going to start imploding or collapsing because, you know, uh, Dove Soap said that they don't like that their ads are being placed on some kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, pregnant w women's tweets or something like that. That's probably the bigger reality here. What This is like his end game, right? Uh, Fuentes on Rumble openly asked for the total extermination of many ethnic groups uh, with the rhetoric that would make a Nazi blush. Well, it, he's not, guys, he's not calling for extermination of ethnic groups. It's of cookies, okay? Come on, cookies. you've got to get it right. And I think that this kind of stuff, I, I do agree with Elon with the fact that it's better to have this kind of stuff out in the open. Because I feel like a really good example of this is Andrew Tate. I feel like after Andrew Tate got reinstated to Twitter... It became a lot more obvious that some of the things that he was saying were just fucking stupid. And I think that the more that people actually see the opinions of anybody, the more that people can actually discuss what those opinions are. And Hasn't Andrew Tate gotten way more tamer since he got back on Twitter, by the way? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not following any of this. Uh, I only know about Nick Fuentes from, again, Destiny trying to have sex with him and then failing, and I'm assuming that's where the friendship completely collapsed. And and I, I don't follow Andrew Tate, but as much as I know, his his opinions have gotten a lot more uh, tame-ish. So yeah, I'm not sure about any of this. And the validity or lack of validity of them, right? Uh, kind of true? Yeah, and so this is what he says. Uh... I believe Nick was also incredibly radicalized as a result of censorship. Well, I think a lot of people have that happen. Yeah. Like, so, so what I think happens is that people might get kicked off of the platform or they get kicked off of like some group or they get fired from a company or they have something happen. Like most people get radicalized, not because of reading online rhetoric, but because something happens to them in their personal life that validates the online rhetoric that they were already aware of. So, like, for example, um, you know, somebody, you know, has a bad experience with, like, a, a girl, right? And then they go online and they start looking for information about why girls are bad. Or, you know, somebody has a bad experience with uh, a black person. And then so they go online and they start reading information about that, right? Most people have the cookie quotes, then people... Eh, good enough take. Take the quotes, then make them their ideology. Oh, yeah, of course, right? JK Rowling is a good example of radicalized by backlash. Her earlier tweets were pretty normal, but she got death threats. I think JK Rowling is a great example. No, JK Rowling is not a great example. Okay, okay, this is getting too much into the fucking weeds. The main way of people getting radicalized in his example is if you get pushed out by a part of society, you have no choice but to enter the other part of society. And if you, for example, if if you were friends with i don't know some kind of leftists and then they uh, then they became extremely uh, crazy and be, uh, went full on woke or something like that and then they shoot you out of their friend group well you don't really have a choice now if you want friends to begin with now at this point then to just go to the opposite group and be a part of them that's how a lot of radicalization happens uh People just want to be with other people, they want to be understood, they want to be a part of something, they want social interactions. And if one group completely forsakes you, especially if it's dumb reasons, then congratulations, it's really easy to, you know, go on the other side. Because at that point, 
the group that has forsaken you, you obviously don't agree with their points because otherwise they would not have forsaken you in the first place, right? So you're already thinking, eh, they're not really that great. So, and now there's another group that's going to accept you, say it's not your fault and whatnot. And it's really easy to just join the other side like this. It's it's a classic thing. Yeah, I, I think that's that's definitely a great example because like J.K. Rowling was like, you know, J.K. Rowling is not one of th those examples. J.K. Rowling is still absolutely as left as they come. She she just doesn't uh, she just doesn't uh, she just does not represent a certain uh, you know ideal of the left, and that's it. But other than that, she is not even remotely close to the right. She was basically saying like, yeah, trans women are women, but they're not the same as like biological women. And people went absolutely fucking ape shit on her for that. Like, I mean, I'm talking like, because before then, see, a lot of people might not remember this, but J.K. Rowling was like a super Omega feminist. She still and, like, is, people by would the way. complained about this a lot on the internet. Again, she still is. Now she's just only preoccupied with the male, female, blah, blah, blah thing. She still is. J.K. Rowling is actually an exception to this because she still has her community that cares about her and likes her because either Harry Potter or her current views against fighting against them. She does not need to join anyone. She, again... J.K. Rowling still is an absolute 100% radical feminist at, at her core. She just does not support one minor part of, uh, of, the, of this conversation. Back in the early days. And so as soon as this happened, a lot of people were like, ah, well, that's what you get, right? Because you court this audience and then now they're turning on you. And uh, that's it. She's to, she's to Lisa Turf. Uh, yeah, yeah, and Turf, for anybody who doesn't know, it's a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. It's a term that people use uh, for, uh, like, women that feel like uh, trans women aren't women, right? That's basically what's going on. And so I think what's happened... Which is correct. It is. ...happened in the Obviously. process of that is that J.K. Rowling has gotten more and more radicalized away from that group and away from, like, the ideology that she used to be kind of promoting because of the fact that people uh, lashed out at her so much because of that. And so... Hell no, J.K. Rowling again. She She's only uh, she's only against this much of this much, okay? She's still... She, she, this is what she was previously, then that uh, whole thing started, and now she's against this much of the big thing. But she's still this part of that big thing. She has not, she is still what she is. And that's honestly, you know, a great thing about J.K. Rowling because, you know, she sticks to her beliefs, actually. Even though I dislike her beliefs and don't agree with them in general most of the time, she still sticks to them and she still stands her ground, which is admirable. Plus, I, ha I find her extremely hot. They aren't like, yeah, I mean, do you guys, do you guys see the same perspective that I do with that? No. Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? You know, she's a horrible person. Yeah, like, turf. Yeah, there he goes. Dumb ideas need to be publicly shamed. Well, I think it's important for dumb ideas to be publicly shamed. I like how he's not going to pick a side here. He's going to... Oh, she's a turf. Yeah. Uh, she, she, she's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Contra it's good. You got to love Asmongold and trying to uh, just, you know, roll with the wind as much as possible. But they also have to be in the public, right? I think you have a point. Yeah, and, and I think that's what happens, right? Is that you know, somebody gets censored or something like that, or they get banned off of a platform. And then after they get banned off of the platform, they become more and more and more radical, right? And I think this happens in real life too. Like think about a lot of like a uh, weird, like school shooter people or, you know, like terrorist people. Like this is generally kind of what happens is that somebody gets marginalized by society in one way or another, or by a group of people. And then they just become more and more extreme over time until it boils over. No, they're just called insane. They're, they're just called insane, you absolute nitwit. They're, they're just called insane, okay? Because everyone almost in life has probably been in that situation that he describes to a certain degree probably on this probably mostly on smaller subjects and whatnot but still everyone has been in that situation to a certain degree and yet there are so little people that actually chose to do do the big blaze up kind of deal thing you know so this is completely not true 
and they ruin their own life or they also ruin other they're, they're just mentally insane and that's it the people's lives in the process and so yeah I, I think probably that happened with nick but i feel like nick has always been pretty extreme right i mean like yeah i don't know if he's any more extreme than he is now I, as i said i haven't watched any content from nick fuentes probably in like three or four years so i, I haven't really been keeping up with it uh let's see the i never knew about him before destiny but it was funny when i saw that 10 out of 10. The rest of this. So then Elon Musk responds, he says this, uh, fate loves irony, but hates hypocrisy. I cannot claim to be a defender of free speech, but then permanently ban someone who hasn't violated the law, no matter how much I dis- Eh, he did claim that he's a defender of free speech, though. Disagree with what they say. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I remember correctly that he did claim that. This is probably, uh, cause us to lose a lot of advertisers. It makes me sad, but a principle is a principle. Yeah, and, and I think that also the advertisers will come back. Uh, because the advertisers don't really care about this problem. They don't really care about Nick. They don't care about Elon. They only care about selling their bullshit. And so as soon as they feel like they won't get bad, uh, you know, bad publicity for it, they'll immediately go back and do it. They care about engagement. Yeah, the, they want to sell their bullshit. Yes, exactly. Also, I was I, I was wondering if this is going to happen. You know, when an advertiser leaves a platform, but their opponents don't leave the platform, you're not losing out once you're losing down uh, down you're losing out more than double because not only you're not advertising now your opponent is advertising where you're not advertising which is more than a double loss honestly it all compounds really great together so you know i was wondering what's going to happen with that and so that's what i think will happen so a lot of people are actually pretty positive about this and um I think also, like, the, there is, like, a certain level of, like, uh, the shareholders don't want bad publicity. Um, well... What shareholders? Oh, I guess, I guess it means of not Twitter, right? Yeah, I mean, the shareholders don't want bad publicity, but what does bad publicity really do most of the time? Nothing. It doesn't do anything. I think that a lot of people, like, and, and this is kind of a problem, is that the internet has created a sense of urgency whenever people are angry about something. But one thing that I've learned, and like, you know, here we go. Oh, look at this, right? Mm, no, the internet has, you know, not done that. That was before the internet. Here, Asmogold's controversial views spark heated online debate. There we go. See? And so wow. I guarantee you in a week, nobody's gonna be talking about that. It's gonna be over. No one's already talking about that. Yeah, it, that's it. And that's always how it goes. Uh, Elon is alienating 50% of the base who wanted his product and by the end is shrinking his publicly traded company. Well, I think that... Wait, what? And the shrinking his publicly traded company. Wait, what? what again? Uh, Elon is alienating 50% of the base who wanted his product and by the end is shrinking his publicly traded company. Huh? How is he alienating 50% of uh, of the u user base or whatever kind of magical base are we talking about here if he just allows anything to happen? And he's not, by the way. If people were re if people really f uh, felt like that, people would fucking go to Threads or whatever garbage platform that someone made. But Threads died in two days. Exactly as I predicted, it's going to die in two days because you must be an idiot to actually think that that's going to work out. Elon is alienating 50% of the base who wanted his product and by the end is shrinking his publicly traded company. What does what is, what is it mean by the end shrinking his publicly traded company? I don't know. Uh, Twitter is private, by the way, now. I'm pretty sure it's still uh, it's private because Elon Musk bought all of that bad boy well i think that he knows that he's doing that and also i th i think that if you're talking about alienating people if you use the foundation of this person is uh you know this is a bad actor or a good actor and therefore you know bringing them on will alienate other people well somebody's going to alienate anyone right i mean like donald trump alienates people uh and they wanted donald trump banned and then uh what's his name uh you know a alex jones that's the point they're, they're not actually alienating people this this is not actually alienation of people alienation of people implies that you are pushing them out intentionally trump is not pushing people out intentionally people 
just are so pissed about b b there are just some individuals that uh some crazy people get extremely pissed about and that's enough for them to leave that's it they alienate themselves not that these people actually alienate anyone who is alex jones alien alienating no one people are alienating themselves because of alex jones and this is right anyone can alienate themselves for whatever reason and you and you can't the, the, if someone chooses to alienate themselves there's nothing you can do about it because what are you gonna do ban two people for one person because if they're already weak-willed enough to alienate themselves uh, because of someone in the first place there's probably going to be another one who they do it for so the math is simple let the person alienate themselves or ban more than two people probably at the end of the day it's kind of easy it alienates people there's a lot of people that get alienated elon musk doesn't actually care about being principled in free speech other than making his product make more money well we'll see what happens right i, I definitely i don't think this is true any longer by the way I think Elon Musk likes money, but at the end of the day, he, I, I don't know what's his net worth, but I'm assuming it's still like something like a hundred billion. Uh, he has enough money to do whatever the hell he pleases, okay? He, 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 and he seems to care about other things than money at this point, from everything that I can gather. So I don't think it's about money for Elon Musk at this point. Maybe, maybe if the money starts drying up or a percentile, if it goes down, it's going to be about the money. But currently, it doesn't seem like it's about the money. I think that bringing back Nick Fuentes will not increase the amount of money that Twitter makes, right? Like, let's just be honest here. Elon Musk is turning Twitter to be like a medieval movie where people shout for executions. Well, he's also making it to where he's bringing back every single person and everybody can say whatever they want. And I think that really... Like, I remember this happened uh, a couple of weeks ago because it was Hitler's birthday. Man, there's a lot of people that like Hitler now. Have you guys noticed that? Yeah. Okay. I'm being 100% serious. Way more than a few years ago. Like, I feel like the Adolf Hitler fan group has grown by, like, 300%. There's been a lot. That's okay. Out of them. Yeah, ye really uh, grew the Adolf camp? Yeah, maybe. A lot of Adolf enjoyers. His speeches get millions of views on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Who's but I mean, like, I think that that's for a historical Hitler's? reason. Let them expose themselves? Yeah, and so uh, with Nick getting unbanned, I feel like that's going to really kind of change the atmosphere. It's they were always there. Boring, they just feel validated now. Well, I think that's a really good point, too, is that there were always people that had these viewpoints, but now that they're not getting immediately deplatformed for them. They're more confident in saying what they are. There's the same people who praise the Columbine shooters. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's also another really good point. I, I haven't really talked about this a whole lot, but inside of like incel cultures, there is a huge fucking amount of people that are like massively positive about uh, school shooters. I, I, I didn't even know. I'm gonna assume this is just random and he just is talking about shit out of his ass like always. I I actually don't even know what it is. What what was that again? What's the, what's the name? About uh school shooter. Huge fucking There is a huge fucking amount of people that are like massively positive about same people who praise the Columbine shooters. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's also another really good point. I I haven't really talked about this a whole lot, but inside of like incel cultures ah incel cultures what the hell is an incel con culture are they even real you hear this word incel constantly and well mostly typically it gets thrown around the moment that you uh say that you know a woman shouldn't be a prostitute out in the open in front of toddlers you know uh, that's when you typically get called an incel nowadays is incel culture even real I can't believe that I have not come across it in that case. Like, what is this magical insult culture? I, I want to know. Because, again, I think Asmongold is just pulling all of this out of his ass. I have no idea where he would specifically go to find an insult culture. There is a huge fucking amount of... I imagine there are discords that are kind of like that. But then again, that's probably a lot for the memes, not just, you know, being serious. But there are probably ones that are serious, but 
Where the hell do you go to specifically find that sort of crap even? Out of the Matrix. Yeah, high scores, exactly. Yeah, actual insane people. Yeah, and I think, like, what, why do they do that? Um, it, it's probably a power fantasy more than anything because I think a lot of people that are incels are generally marginalized. And so because they're marginalized, they just, again, they get more and more extreme. And then before you know... Is he a complete fucking idiot? Most school shootings are about retribution and being right and proving that they are right by uh, doing this and killing the people who wronged them. It's it's about retribution, not whatever your uh, your stupid point is. Anyway, Asmongold, as always, idiot out of 10. 10 out of 10. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.